Hey, Sean here. I was recently in conversation with someone and we got talking about how I'm not qualified to speak about trauma. Those were my words. You see, I wanted to create this podcast, but I felt like an imposter and unequipped. I do not have a tertiary education and therefore I'm not qualified to speak about burnout or mindset, let alone about capacity building or mental health in any form. I am not a psychologist. I'm not a psychiatrist. I'm not a counselor, nor do I claim to be a therapist of any kind. I am just a dad. And I'm just a dad to one child. Yes, that six-year-old child, Zoe is her name, by the way, has intractable epilepsy and follows a restrictive ketogenic diet. She takes three different anticonvulsants every single day and consumes all her liquids in jelly form because she has yet to master controlling fast-moving liquids. That jelly, by the way, is made of a fucking expensive formula milk, an emulsified MCT oil and gelatine, which I weigh out to the gram twice a week. Yes, my little girl is developmentally delayed and has seen a physiotherapist, an occupational therapist, and a speech therapist every single week of her life. Well, excluding the weeks she was hospitalized, <laughs> obviously. Yes, Zoe is nonverbal and unable to feed herself, wash herself, dress herself, and non-ambulant. Her neurologist used that word in a letter to the medical aid this week, so I'm trying to work it into my vocabulary. It means people who are unable to move without assistance. For example, a person confined to bed. Yes, my daughter has an ICD-10 code and a god-awful mucus suction machine. She also has a wheelchair. She has a feeding chair, a standing frame. Her bed has rails around it, and she wears orthotics on her feet to try and correct biomechanical issues around her ankles. Oh, and there was that time when I gave Zoe mouth-to-mouth -mouth and resuscitated her limp body. Yes, I am just a dad. A dad that has been there every step of the way. Often it feels like one step forward, two giant steps back, half a step sideways before we take another step forward again. I'm very fortunate to have done this dance of life with my superhuman wife. Hello. That's Rue. She has a PhD, by the way. And while I'm not qualified in a cap and gown ceremony, certificate on the wall kind of way, my credentials are lived every single day. When I remind myself of all of this, <laughs> I think I have skin in the game. And then I start to remind myself that I have worked through burnout with the help of therapy and antidepressants. Guys, I hosted radio shows entertaining hundreds of thousands of people with banter and jokes while my wife sat next to Zoe's bed in hospital, counting the number of times Zoe had a seizure so that she could relay the info to the doctors. To this very day, I get anxious about leaving them and overwhelmed by bustling environments. I've lived the most bizarre secondary trauma, and it creeps up on me when I don't get enough sleep, sunshine, or exercise, which is too often than I care to admit. And that is why this podcast exists. Because being human is hard. I know this. You know this. Because keeping it together is harder than it looks. And it's made even harder when we try and do it alone. So this is an invitation for you to join me. Subscribe to Some Assembly Required wherever you like to listen to podcasts, and together we can break down and reassemble again. I'm going to release three different formats of the show for you to listen to. Some episodes will be interviews with experts about 
or everything, I suppose, from sleep. And we call it slow wave sleep because if you measure sleep with EEG, you can see really big and slow waves. And that's because all of the neurons in the brain are much more synchronized. And when they're synchronized, you can catch these bigger waves. To psychology. And we're surprisingly bad at actually knowing what we're thinking and feeling, you know, especially in the moment. Nutrition. Some episodes will be like this one, just me sharing. And others, I'm hoping, will be stories told by you and me together. Stories of resilience, capacity building, overcoming the odds. Want some hope here too. And let's rewire, reassemble the way that we think, the way we feel and respond to our friends and families. We can do it. Just one more thing. I suddenly have lyrics of a song in my head. It's a song I've heard hundreds and hundreds of times. It's, uh, it's on a CD that lived in my car and would play often to and from doctor's visits. In fact, Zoe still listens to the song quite regularly. The lyrics go, find me grateful, find me thankful, find me on my knees, find me dreaming. I want you to know that Zoe is doing really well today is 30 September 2022. It's International Podcast Day. Woohoo! Tomorrow, the 1st of October, will mark nine months that Zoe has been seizure-free. Nine whole months. This is the longest we've gone without a single seizure. No major interventions, not even a week in ICU. This is brand new territory for me, friends. This is never. Six years. Okay, she was rushed to ER earlier this year, but that was because she's currently learning to crawl, something doctors said she'd never do, and unfortunately she slipped and slit her chin open on the tiles. Six stitches, if you must know. And as you listen to this, I hope you find me grateful and thankful and on my knees. It's taken six years to get here, and we still have a long way to go. I will keep on dreaming, many a dream, until they become reality. And I want you to come along for the ride too. A quick thank you to Rue for dropping in earlier. You'll hear more from her in upcoming episodes, I promise. Original music by Josh Princeloop. Production by me, Sean. Thank you for listening to Some Assembly Required. <laughs>